said. It was the first of several storms expected to roll across California over the next week. The current system is expected to be warmer and wetter, while next week's storms will be colder, said Hannah Chandler Cooley, a meteorologist at the National Weather Service in Sacramento. The Sacramento region could receive a total of 4 to 5 inches, 10 to 13 centimeters, of rain over the span of the week, Chandler Cooley said. Strong winds could cause tree damage and lead to power outages and high waves on Lake Tahoe may capsize small vessels the weather service in Reno said. Avalanche warnings were issued in the backcountry around Lake Tahoe and Mammoth Lakes south of Yosemite. On the Sierra's eastern front, flood watches and warnings were issued into the weekend north and south of Reno, Nevada, where minor to moderate flooding was forecast along some rivers and streams. In Southern California, moderate to heavy rain was falling Saturday. The region will begin drying out on New Year's Day, with no rainfall expected during Monday's Rose Parade in Pasadena. Another round of heavy showers was forecast for Tuesday or Wednesday. The National Weather Service in Oxnard said. As the new year begins, California's Sierra is closing in on the second largest snowpack we've seen at this time of year in the last two decades, with more snow expected to pummel the mountain range in the coming days. But here's why it's far too soon to declare an end to the drought, last year, we started 2022 with a similar bounty, and then ended the snow season way below normal. We've come out hot. But at the same time, it's really early, said Sean de Guzman, manager of the California Department of Water Resources monthly snow surveys. On Tuesday, state water officials plan to tromp through the snow at Echo Summit, south of Lake Tahoe, for the winter's first snowpack survey, a monthly ritual that is now mostly for show thanks to more than 100 sensors throughout the Sierra that measure accumulation every day. It's of vital importance in the drought-stricken Golden State because officials use the measurements to help manage California's water supply, which relies heavily on melting snow. On Saturday, the statewide average stood at a whopping 162% of normal compared to historic averages for this time of year. Just eclipsing last year's figure. But a Bay Area News Group analysis found that of the seven times in the last 20 years that California started the new year with an above-average snowpack, only twice, 2005 and 2011, did it finish the snow season in April still above average. Several feet of snow is expected to accumulate by early next week as yet another storm system plows in from the Pacific, bringing colder temperatures and additional rain to the Bay Area on Monday night. It's just far too early to tell whether or not these storms will have an impact on the drought said Andrew Schwartz. Lead scientist at the UC Berkeley Central Sierra Snow Laboratory near Donner Summit. We were in this exact same spot last year. We were way above average, and then the faucet shut off in January through March. Last year, the Sierra snowpack plummeted from 160% of normal at the end of 2021 to 37% of normal by the season's end. The last time California closed a snow season above average was in 2019, at 161% of normal, after ending the previous year at just 73% of normal. There is no reliable way to predict what's in store for the next four months. If the faucet does again shut off, many of the state's reservoirs will be left mostly empty. As of Friday, two of California's largest reservoirs, Shasta and Oroville, were only at one-third of their capacity. And the snowpack, though considerable for this time of year, is still only half of what's considered normal by April 1st, the end of a typical California snow season. Jay Lund, professor of civil and environmental engineering at UC Davis, says that several years of drought have left the reservoirs in a deficit that may take years to refill. If we had just one year of drought, we'd be okay, Lund said. But, we still haven't even replenished all the groundwater that was taken out from the previous drought. Regardless of what happens this season, the long-term prospects are dire. As more carbon dioxide is emitted into the atmosphere by fossil fuel use, drought conditions are expected to worsen in the coming decades. 
One study published in February found that 2000 to 2021 was the driest 22-year period in the western U.S. in at least the last 1,200 years. The study also found approximately 19% of the region's drought conditions were attributable to human-caused climate change.